praise God. Welcome everyone to the God in the Midst Gitem Radio uh, Sunday School Lesson Edition, and I am your host and teacher, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. Welcome, welcome. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for being God and being God all by yourself. Because of who you are, dear Lord, we just praise your holy name. We ask you this day as we get ready to study your word, that you open up our eyes and ears and mind and our hearts to your word, that we may truly be just not hearers of your word, but doers of your word. Anoint afresh, dear Lord, and bless us this morning, as you always do, where you said where two or three are gathered in your name, that you would be in the midst, be in the midst of us. We plead the blood of Jesus over this technology, Lord, that this technology will have no technical difficulties. We plead your blood over everyone who's listening now and those who are listening later, that they might be blessed by you, O oh God, and that your blood would cover, because you said to us that there's power in your blood. Thank you, Lord, for your blood. Now, Lord, just anoint as only you can. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have Facebook going. We have the conference call going. Um, and we welcome everybody. Our lesson today comes from James, James chapter 2, James chapter 2, starting at verse 14, all the way down to verse 26, James chapter 2, starting at verse 14, all the way down to verse 26, excuse me, 26. So we're going to uh, have the... Uh, Bible reading come from the uh, Bible Gateway software on online. Um, their dramatization of the NIV version of the Bible. So please sit back and listen for, for a minute or so. Amen. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? <laughs> can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, mm -hmm. but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. Mm -hmm. You believe that there is one God. One God. Good. Even the demons believe that. Mercy, God. And shudder. Mercy. Mercy. You foolish person. Do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Mm hmm Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? Yes. You see that his faith and his actions were working together. And his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled mm -hmm. that says, Abraham believed God, yes. and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. Mm -hmm. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction? As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Amen, amen, amen. That is our reading of James chapter 2, verses 14 through um, 26. Um, the title of today's lesson <clears throat> is Faith Without Works is Dead. Faith Without Works is Dead. Uh, our key verse is verse 26 of chapter 2, where it says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. Our key concept for today is that we should show our faith and do good works. 
that are keys for kids. Number one, faith and works should go together. Show your, number two, show your faith by doing what you can to help others. We, number three, we show our faith, our, excuse me, we show our love and faith by our actions. Amen, amen. That's our keys for kids. Uh, as we go deeper into the lesson today, we're going to have some learning facts that we're going to look at to summarize this relationship between faith and work. And then our biblical principle is to explain why obedience is, necess is a necessary component to a life of faith. And our daily application that we want to take away from this lesson is to identify areas in one's life where actions do not follow faith and make a plan to change it. Our outline is in three parts this morning. Um, part one is going to be useless piety. That's verses 14 through 16. Uh, our sex, next point is empty profession. That's verses 17 through 19. And then faith, faithful actions. That's verses 20 and 26. Amen. Amen. Um, this, this lesson, this lesson, this lesson is, a, is one of those lessons that we, we uh, pretty much have heard all of our lives. We, 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 we don't understand if you're a true Christian the controversy here because uh, true Christianity those who truly believe in Jesus Christ know that their faith has to have some actions we are known by the fruits um, that we bear and so this 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 lesson as a background is is in the book of James and James was Jesus's brother some like to say half brother but I just like to say that was his brother. Jesus was his brother. James was Jesus's brother. And, and um, uh, tradition holds that, that James did not believe that Jesus was the Christ, the Messiah, until after his resurrection. And once he believed, then James uh, became the leader of the church in uh, Jerusalem. And, and so um, severe persecution had, had followed uh, the stoning of Stephen um, in, in Jerusalem. And, and, and all the Jews, or uh, Christian Jews in particular, who were, were uh, in the area started scattering throughout all the Mediterranean world. And James wrote to encourage them and, 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 and the and fellow believers to, to hold on even in extreme difficulty. We we know we know that James, when he started off, he, he told us, my brother, and count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that that the testing of your face produces patience. But patience has its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Uh, it, 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 James is a practical book. It's a book uh, similar in my mind in many ways to, to the wisdom in Proverbs. It, they they kind of go hand in hand. It's a word, it's a practical book that gives you the wisdom. And so in this lesson, in this lesson, um, we, we are going to find some things in this lesson that's going to really help us. But I, I want to pose something in the beginning because that's what I'm going to close on in the end. This, this, this faith without works, faith without works, uh, imagine if you will, and I watched this TV show uh, uh, that deals with people going to the pawn shop. And they go to the pawn shop with some family heirloom, some different uh, 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 thing that they have found here or there. And they go into this pawn shop to find out the worth of that which they have. And if it is if it has worth, then they sell it and, and get the worth from it. But many a times, the people who come to these pawn shops thinking that they have something of value have a knockoff, not the real thing, not the genuine thing. And so here it is with faith. If there was a heavenly pawn shop, Many folks who go to church Sunday after Sunday, many people who 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 
who, who say amen to the preacher and they know deep theology and all of that. They got all of this intellect in their head, but 18 inches away is their heart, the head and the heart, and they don't have the Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. In their heart. So therefore, when they go in to this heavenly pawn shop and ask the value of their faith, they'll find out it's not the genuine faith. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So, so, so keep that in mind, keep that in mind, because that's what we're talking about. Genuine faith, the real thing, ain't nothing. <laughs> they say it in a song like the real thing, baby, ain't nothing. Like having real faith in God. Oh, hallelujah. And so as we look at this text, as we look at this text, we, we're going to look at this, 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 this genuine faith that, that, that when you have faith, you're going to have works. It, 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 it's like this. It's like this. Being in a boat, a rowboat, a rowboat, and you got two oars, you got two oars on the rowboat and you're rowing. If, if, if you try to roll with just one side, with one side, one oar is faith and one side is, is work. If you just had your faith, what you call faith going with no works, when you roll that boat, you're going to go in circles. And the, the opposite is also true. If you have just works with, with, without faith, you're just going to go into a circle as you roll your boat. It's just going to keep going around and around and around. And that's how many Christians are. You mean, 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 not many Christians, but many people who presume, assume that they're Christians are. We, we got to have faith and works rowing together in order for us to move forward. In God, oh hallelujah! I, I I got all these different illustrations in my mind that that I just wanted to bring out and share with you. But 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 let, let let's go into our text. Let's go into our text, and uh, I'm gonna come back later and talk about Abraham and Rahab. But I, I just want to go deeper into our text. And so so we look at look at verses. Uh, um, see, let's see. We're gonna look at verses 14. Through where am I? Okay, fourteen and sixteen, and I'm gonna read them. I'm gonna read them this time um, out of the New King James Version of the Bible. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have work? Works can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say to them, depart in peace, be warm and feel, but you do not give them the things which they need for their body, what does it profit? What, what does it profit? Useless piety. This, this is, this is useless piety. People walking around with saying, praise the Lord, but don't have anything behind that praise the Lord. They, 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 they got words coming out of their mouth, but they don't have a walk to go with it. Uh, uh, I think it was Dwight Moody said that the, that the Bible should be shoelaces. The Bible should be like shoelaces. So, so when you tie down them shoelaces, the, you got to walk somewhere. You got to go and do something. You can't be standing still, just talking noise all the time. Oh, wake up, everybody. We, we, we got to get out of this, this mindset uh, uh, that, 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 that our words are the only thing that counts. No, 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 no. You you can tell me you love me, but but it's better when you show me that you love me. Oh, listen to the Message Bible. The Message Bible says it like this. Dear friends, and I'm going to actually read down to uh, 17 in the Message Bible. Dear friend, do you think you, you can get away, get anywhere in, in this if you learn all the right words but never do anything. 
Does merely talking about faith indicate a person really has it? For instance, you come upon an old friend dressed in rags and half starving and say, good morning, friend. Be, be clothed in Christ. Be filled with the Holy Spirit and walk out without providing so much as a coat or a cup of soup. Where does that get you? Where does that get you? And verse 17 in the Message Bible, and I'm going to come back to it later. It says, it is obvious that God talk without good acts is outrageous nonsense. It's obvious, isn't it? That's nonsense. And so, so, so here we have, here we have the situation in our lives where, where we are out trying to minister to somebody. We, we got to put some action behind our ministry. Sometimes it's just giving somebody a dollar before we start telling them how good the Lord is. You, we can tell them, I, I, I do this often. I say, I'm going to give you this money. But, but I want you to know the source of this money. The source of this money is my Lord. I know you need some coffee. I know you need some food. But here, here take this. But I want you to understand. I'm not giving you this to go out and buy drugs or alcohol or anything like that. And you can do that if you want to. But I'm giving you this because the Lord laid it on my heart to give it to you with the hopes that this will help you physically and eventually help you spiritually. Oh, let, let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. Uh, I have a thing I do. I have a thing I do. I don't, I don't know if I learned it from one of my sisters or. I learned it from someone else that when I go to restaurants, before I before I pray, before I pray, I ask the, the waitress, I ask the waitress, I say, are we getting ready to pray over our food? Uh, I got a question for you. Do you have anything would you like for us to pray for? And they lose, usually look at us like, like, like we're crazy when we do this and I'm doing this. And I say, well, I'll tell you what, go get our water and then come back, go get our drinks and come back. And if you can think of anything, then we'll pray for it for you. Man, I've been seeing some waitresses light up because they gave them an opportunity to, to what was being heavy on their hearts all that day to, to, to have someone and some group of people come in agreement with them to pray over that which they're doing. Oh, yeah. Praying for folks is an action, a, a faith action. It's a work. But 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 you can't just leave it there. You can't just leave it there. I just wanted to share that with you. But let, let's go deeper into this lesson. Let's go deeper into this lesson. So the next part of our lesson, the next part of our lesson, is is dealing with this. We just dealt with the piety, useless piety. The next part of our lesson, we're going into empty profession. Empty profession. Empty profession. Uh, am I ready to leave to go there yet? Hold on, I got a few more minutes. Hold on, let, let's let's stay. Let's stay. Let's stay with the empty. Let's stay with the useless piety for just a minute. I gotta stay there for just a minute because I gotta go deeper. I got a lot of illustrations, but I gotta go into the word. Here's here's the thing. James is explaining to us that people can have faith, but if they do not accompany their words by actions their faith is worth nothing e even even jesus himself warned us he warned and says uh, uh that 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 uh to do the father's will to do the father's will would enter help us enter into heaven not those who just go around saying, Lord, Lord. Many people going around and say, Lord, Lord. And they think they're doing good, good works or even they think that they don't know the Lord. You got to know him for yourself. And so, so James in this book, he's underscoring that relationship between faith and works. Works are, are being good and, and doing good deeds. It can't earn you salvation. We, we know that we, you can't earn your salvation for, for, for over in Ephesians chapter two, 
verses 8 and 9, it, it makes that clear. We are saved by faith through grace. We're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And not alone, lest any man should boast. That's, that's how we're saved. So, so, so it is, it is grace and Jesus and our faith in him that saves us. It's not our works. It's not our works. So you can't earn your way into heaven. But, but here it is. Once you are truly saved, truly saved, a change occurs when you're truly saved. And that change occurs will accompany good works and good actions. You become obedient. Your life should show evidence of obedience to the word of God. And so, so, so there shouldn't be any argument here. You should go in and help and be a helper. And you should have a heart of help. Having faith. Oh, hallelujah. Is a heart matter. And it has to be practical. I, I remember, and I, I say the same thing. I guess I'm the old folks now, but it used to be, we say the old folks used to say, uh, uh, the things I used to do, I don't do no more. <laughs> I mean, when, when, you, when you get truly saved, you don't want to do the things you used to do. You don't want to do them. But you want to do some things for God because his love has, has, has prompted you to do that which God has called you to do. Oh, yes. It is God that worketh in us both the will and the do according to his good pleasure. Oh, let's go on now. That's, that's that useless piety. Now, now I want to talk about this empty profession. Empty profession, starting at verse 17. He says, thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Okay? And he says, but someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your works without your, show me your faith without your works. And I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God? Do You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But but do you want to know, oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Don't you want to understand that? Don't you want to understand that? Here it is. Here it is. Many people have an intellectual knowledge that there is a God. Many people have an intellectual knowledge that, that God exists. They, they even believe the history and the theology of God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. But they never gave their life to, to the Lord. And here's the thing. Even demons know the word of God. They know it backwards and forwards. But, but that word that they know, Demons don't believe in God. They just tremble. They don't have saving faith to believe in God. They just have knowledge of it. Because they know he's going to take them out after a while. So, 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 so what he's saying here, what he's saying here is just catch this, my brother. and says, do I hear your profession to believe in the one and only God, but, but then... Observe your complacency sitting back as if you had done something wonderful. That's that's just great. Demons do that. But but what good does it do them? Use your head. Do not suppose for a minute that you can cut faith and work into two and not end up with a corpse in your hand. Mm, mm, mm. Come on, message Bible. Yes, you end up with a corpse in your hand. You can't cut them in half. These, these are those who go around with these empty professions. Profession, professing Jesus Christ, but don't have possession 
of Jesus Christ. We like to we like to always say it this way, you know. Uh, um, I ask people this question: Do you know Michael Jordan? And they say, "Oh yeah, I know, I know Michael Jordan. He he wanted to he the goat, one of the greatest of all times. Goat, he a goat, he a goat, he great basketball player." I say, "Okay, all right, so you know Michael." Now, now let me ask you a question: Does Michael Jordan know you? <laughs> And they go, no, man, he don't know me. He don't. Yeah, and, and, and that's how it is sometimes with people when, when it comes to Jesus. They, they, they know who he is, but he doesn't know them. Intellectual knowledge in your head, but 18 inches away in your heart, he's not there. And so we, we got to get to the point where we go beyond intellectually agreeing with the Bible and knowing scripture and going to church and singing in the choir and serving on the deacon boards and all of that. But, but, but we ain't been transformed in our heart that produces a change in life, which is what really matters. Mm, mm, mm. So finally, our, our last section, our last section is, 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 is faithful actions. Listen, listen to verses 20 again, all the way down to verse 26. It says in verse 20, it says in verse 20, he says, but, but do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham? Our father justified by works when he offered up Isaiah, his son, on the altar. Do you see that faith was working together with his works? And by works, faith was made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled which says, Abraham believed God. And it was counted unto him as righteousness. And he was made a friend of God. You see, then that a man is justified by his works and not by faith alone. Abraham. We know who Abraham is. I'm going to come back to Rahab. We know who Abraham is. Abraham was, was, was the son of a terror and, 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 and he was from the land of all. And he believed in God and left his family because God gave him a promise that he would be a father of many nations. Abraham obeyed God, demonstrating great faith in him. And he is considered the father of our faith. And, and, and you got to understand, he is the patriarch of not only Judaism and Christianity, but Islam too. So Abraham was willing to offer up his son Isaac, the promised one. And Abraham, we know it waited so many years to have a son. In fact, he was 100 years old and his wife Sarah was 90. But God had promised Abraham and Sarah that they would have a son and, and Isaac was that fulfillment. But, but then God told Abraham, Abraham, I want you to sacrifice your son as a burnt offering. Abraham got up took Isaac and headed up the mountain. He made an altar. He placed him on the altar. He lifted up his hand to kill him. And God stopped him and provided a ram in the bush. Why, why, why was Abraham so willing to, to obey God? He was convinced that God had a larger plan. That, that he would, 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 could, could not see because God had promised Abraham that he would be a father of many nations. That's faith in action. When you can believe, when you can believe 
God, no matter what's going on, that he's going to make a way out of nowhere. And he was obedient. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Well, maybe you're saying, well, Abraham, Abraham, man, that, that's, that's a man of great faith. That's the father of the faith. I, that's, he's so righteous. And, 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 and because of his obedience his, and his faith all working together, all that working together, it was counted unto him as righteousness. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not an Abraham. Well, maybe you're not an Abraham. And maybe, maybe, uh, uh, can we go into another comparison? Look at verse 25. He says, likewise, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by, by works when she received a message and sent messengers or spies and sent them out another way? Yeah. Abraham, I mean, uh, Rahab was nothing but a harlot, like a prostitute. She, she wasn't even a Jew. She lived in the town of Jericho. And when, 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 when Joshua was sent the spies in the Jericho to see what was going on in the land of Canaan, that, 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 that she gave them cover. She gave them a place to stay. And hid them. And they told her, they promised her, look, here's the deal. You, you demonstrated that you believe in our God by, by hiding us. This is what I want you to do. Put a, put a, put a red scarlet string, bow, ribbon. And after we destroy this city, if you there in the house where this red scarlet string is, you and your whole family, we will not destroy. She believed that. And when the walls came tumbling down in Jericho, they came in and they saw that her faith was put into action because she had put that red scarlet string ribbon around so that they could see it and she had her whole family there. Oh, glory, hallelujah. So my brothers and my sisters, this text ends with, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Yes. How can you say, Lord, help me lose weight? I'm talking about myself now. I ain't talking about y'all. I'm just talking about me. I'm talking about me right now. <laughs> How can you say, Lord, help me lose weight? And yet you ain't going out walking and exercising. Lord, help me eat healthier. But you're still going eating all that food. That's unhealthy for you. Oh, you got to put your words, your faith into action. This thing, this thing has to be authentic. It has to be the real McCoy. <laughs> that's, that's the old phrase that we used to use. It, it has to be authentic. The real deal. And so, if you were taking your faith to the pawn shop, the heavenly pawn shop, would it show up as real faith? What, what is your faith worth? Or will it be considered just a knockoff? Is it the real deal? That's the challenge. For us today. To go out. And do those things. That are authentic. Based on our faith. 
Oh, hallelujah. Well, as we get ready to end this lesson, let me go through a couple of points for us to ponder. Claims of faith, number one, without evidence of good works are dead and empty. Number two, our faith, our behavior, and the way we live are evidence of our faith in the Lord God. Number three, as a breathless body amidst no indication of life, so a fruitless faith exhibits nothing more than hypocrisy. Many times as Christians, we see people around us that they talk a good game, but we know that they, they're just being hypocritical because they don't want to obey God in the least. In conclusion, the human body and the spirit work together. But when a body dies, the spirit leaves the body. The same happens when your faith, your love, your love for God leaves out good works, good deeds. If there's no good works, then your faith is dead. Your faith is a lie when you have good works. Remember, Jesus always did works, good works for others. I want you to be encouraged, my brothers and sisters, that you live a life where you not just talk about Jesus, but put your hands and your feet to doing things to help others. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we truly believe you are the one and only God. May this belief be much more than words. You have proven faithful to us. Help us, Lord, to be faithful to you. You have shown your actions by giving us Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins. And that you raised from the dead. Help us, Lord, to pick up our cross and follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Before we end the word, we always like to give those who are listening an opportunity to give your life to Christ so that you can be able to say, yeah, when I gave my life to Christ, my hands looked new and my feet did too. You can say, I, I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. I don't go where I used to go and I don't do the things I used to do. But I now live, move, and have my being in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will, Lord, for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen.
Be blessed on Facebook. We're getting ready to go into our conference call section where we talk about the, 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 the lesson and we discuss it and, and have questions or, or, or comments and, and then go into a prayer time. You can call our number at 619-639-4733. That's Get Them Radio at 619-639-4733. Be blessed and always be a blessing.